So as I've mentioned in the previous videos, uh, in the late 90s, I had a pretty nice uh, IBM DOS machine. But my family held on to that for many years, well into the 90s. And it wasn't until my oldest sister uh, paid for her, with her own money, she got herself, I believe, a gateway computer. Uh, and it was Windows... 95, I think. Yeah, we had it by by 90. It wasn't 97, so it was Windows 90. No! Hers was still probably Windows 3.1? Yeah. I. Oh, it's not important. The point of this story is Doom. Best game ever. Um, so she got this computer, and I think her boyfriend at the time, uh, who was now her husband, uh, I'm assuming it was his, I'm pretty sure it was his copy, he had a, a shareware version of Doom. I started playing this game, I fell in love, and the shareware copy uh, that they that he had had editing tools to edit the game. So I definitely, I went out and for my birthday I told my parents I want the full version of this game. They bought me the full version, I started making my own wads, I started making my own levels, and I even uh, at some point, uh, probably 95-ish, I think it was my freshman year of high school, I spent like 300 bucks on a feed-through black and white scanner. And I was scanning in pictures of my friends. I would get pictures of them, you know, with an old film camera, develop it, scan it into the computer, black and white, and then go and try to color tint it to give them color, and then put them in the game. And this is really, really where I really started getting in computers, because here is a game that existed that was amazing, but it allowed me to make changes to it and create whatever I want. And I did so much with it, making new levels and new games and coming up with new ways uh, to, to make the game do stuff. Uh, at this point, the game was not open source yet. We were still a few years out from that, but so many edit tools, they had one called Dehacked, I believe is the name of it, where you can make the DEH files for it, where basically you can go in and uh, modify binaries. So if you want to not just change the graphics of how a character acted, you can change how it acted. Same with weapons, and you can make the rocket launcher shoot a bazillion times a second and end up blowing yourself up because the rockets crash into each other. Um, and this just sparked my imagination. And then uh, Duke Nukem came out, which also had editors in it, and you could actually edit some of the code for that game. I remember going in there, and I had just taken a computer programming, very, very basic computer programming class at school, and I learned about if-then statements, and I found these config files on, uh, for Duke Nukem that had uh, uh, if-then statements in it, and I would go in and modify how stuff happened. And uh, that's something that, that, that made these games great, and especially Doom. Um, that you were able to do that even before it was open source, and then eventually they released the, the source code for the game under the GPL. And now, 25 years after the game uh, you know, was created, people are still developing it, still making it new, adding new features, developing new levels for it, and a lot of other game developers just don't seem to get that. And you look at some of these popular games from 5, 10, 15, 20 years ago, and they're pretty much non-existent now. People might play them occasionally for nostalgic purposes, but they they haven't evolved and they aren't still actively actively developed by the community because they can't be. Where Doom is just, I mean, you can go on and people are making complete new mods. I saw a video the other day, someone turned uh, Doom, the Doom engine into a Donkey Kong Country game uh, with a side view and it, it's crazy why somebody would do that, because <laughs> uh, it'd probably be easier to create that game from scratch than it would be to convert the Doom engine, but it was amazing that they did do that, and and the fact that there's so many people, I play Doom, uh, usually at night after my kids go to bed, I have a little bit of time uh, to myself, and I'll spend a half an hour almost every night playing Doom, and there are so many things uh, created over the years and still being created that I don't have to play the same levels over and over again, uh, and there's just new features, and and the game is still amazing to me so many years later and to so many people. And the fact that it is is that it was so modifiable even at the beginning, but that it was eventually open source under a free license like the GPL um, that that is able to still exist and evolve and people still love it. And, and so many software developers in general just miss the whole point of free software and how much better it can make your games or your programs in general uh, because it allows all these people uh, outside of your core development group to be creative and bring new things to it at no cost to you. So, 
Uh, that was just a little talk about Doom and why it's so great. Because not only was it designed by a genius developer and a genius crew of people who were able to push the boundaries of computers because they were so smart, but they were smart enough to realize that it could be even better if they involved other people. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a great day.